Previous watching on this channel for educational purposes only is not intended as financial advice. Let's talk about the Ichimoku cloud today. I am uh, known for my Ichimoku clouds. If you've never seen the cloud before, welcome. If you're hyper visual like I am, the cloud should click with you very quickly. Even if you're not, although there may be a little bit of a learning curve, the cloud is extremely useful for any market, any time frame, futures, commodities, equities, crypto, especially. I highly encourage everyone to at least know that it exists and how to use it before you say it's not for me because you just never know. So in today's video, let's talk about how I got here uh, with the cloud, my settings, how, why that's different. Okay. Not necessarily better or worse. I don't want you to go attack somebody because they're using different settings or why aren't you using these settings? Use whatever you want to use for you. Some people prefer the 200 day moving average. Some people prefer the 50 day moving average. Okay. It doesn't mean that one is right or one is wrong. Your trading style may affect the settings you use and that's fine. I'm just sharing with you the settings I've used for the past decade on crypto specifically in case you're wondering why is he using what he's using? I, I will discuss that. Uh, let's talk about some nomenclature. I'll give some examples, back testing, forward testing, how we can use TK lines as oscillators. I'll talk about fractals when we are discussing trailing stop losses as well as uh, re-entry signals. And then the uh, infamous, now famous edge to edge trades, as well as some more just live examples on completely random stuff, just to give you a sense of how to read it, how I would read it uh, using my settings. And it is uh, currently pouring here. Can't think of a better day to talk about clouds. So love the Wikipedia page for any indicator. It's a great first step towards understanding who created this thing. What was it for? I'm going to butcher his name. Goichi Hosoda spent 30 years perfecting this and released it in the, in the 60s. Now he used it for rice prices, I believe, rice futures. And what it literally means is Ichimoku at a glance. And as you suspect, very quickly, when you put this on a chart, you'll know, once you know what the cloud is, what you're looking at. Now I'd say cloud is related to waves. Cloud has a lot of other stuff I'm not even going to talk about. I'm just going to Pretend it doesn't exist for the purposes of this video. Super advanced kind of out there stuff that I don't really use anyway. So don't stop here if you want to learn more about the cloud. There's plenty more to learn. I'm just sharing with you today what my valuable nuggets of cloud knowledge are. And I wouldn't be here without Chaos Trader, okay? If you want to watch the video that started it all, 450,000 views, I was probably 50,000 of those 10 years ago, okay? If you don't like this video, watch his, okay? <laughs> because that's how I learned what the cloud is, what to do with it, how to trade it. You know, he uses different settings. That's fine. He might trade it a little differently. That's fine. Over time, you will establish your own style technique once you understand what's going on. Uh, but his video was integral in what I do today, as was Rob Booker. When I'm discussing doubling the settings, I got that idea from Rob Booker many, many years ago, okay? And he goes through it here. And what effectively doubling settings on any indicator will do is slow down your trades. It will give you fewer trade entries, fewer stop losses. It will give you ideally, ideally better signals. Okay, not always, but ideally. Now, sometimes for crypto, it's too slow. Doubled settings, right? So what do I do? I just move the time frames around. It's a dangerous game if you're new. It's a dangerous game if you don't know what you're doing. But if you're looking for things... If you're looking for entries, okay, again, dangerous game, move the time frames around. I'll go through that as well at the end. Uh, but if you're wondering, you know, how did I double the settings? Why? Watch Rob, Rob's video. As far as why crypto settings, how did that even exist? How did I come to that conclusion? This was a chart from Lamogui 2013, where I saw this and thought, hmm, maybe I should change the settings because Ichimoku was created around markets that are open five days a week, nine to five. Right. And some cloud purists will tell me that's not correct. The, the settings mean something completely different. In the end, for me, it was better to change the settings. It was better to double the settings than to use anything else. OK. And again, use whatever you want. I don't care. Whatever works for you. I'm just telling you what worked for me and how we got here. As far as putting Ichimoku on a chart on TradingView. OK. Click indicators in the top here. Type in cloud. You'll see it pop up. It'll get added to your chart. You'll hit the cog, go to inputs, and then you can change to my settings. 20, 60, 120, 30. 
that'll be in the description of the video is along with everything else here in case you forget. So let's break some stuff down. You know, you might be seeing this for the first time thinking, okay, this is busy. This is loud. What's going on here? Let's just go left to right. First things first, the settings are critical because if you're not using these settings, your stuff will look different and that's fine. All of what I'm about to say is perfectly ap applicable, but you may get different entries, worse entries, better entries, different signals, right? It'll be slightly different. The concepts will be the same. So let's dive to the deep end of the pool right away. Let's start learning what this stuff is on the chart. So this green colored blob like object known as the Kumo or the cloud, I may switch that interchangeably. This blue and red line may be harder to see if you're colorblind. Uh, the top line here is the blue line, bottom line here, the red line, Tenkin, Kijun, shortened to the TK lines most of the time. The cloud itself, you can label as Senku Span A, Senku Span B. No one calls it that. I've never seen it called that unless you're, you know, a mega cloud nerd, okay? <laughs> I'm a cloud nerd. I don't call it that. Not super important, but when you're talking about a Kumo twist, when A is over B, it's bullish. When B is over A, it's bearish. All of these lines here, for the most part, are sort of, kind of, but not really variations on moving averages, okay? There's plenty of cloud theory you can read up on. I'm not going to get into it. Go to back to the Wikipedia page. Go back to the Investopedia if you're curious. But these settings here influence how the cloud will look, obviously. So we've got the cloud, got the TK lines. When the cloud flips from bullish to bearish, when it flips from green to red or red to green, that specific time point is called a Kumo twist. That's when the cloud will get its thinnest and you'll see uh, a switch in color there. Because cloud is useful for trend trading, immediately what should pop out to you is this entire time in Bitcoin 2016, 2017, beginning of 2018, the cloud was green, the cloud was bullish. Didn't take a rocket scientist to know that we were making successive higher highs month over month. But in the moment and how you traded that may have changed dramatically on whether or not you're using something like this versus some low time frame moving average. We certainly have the benefit of hindsight here, obviously. So I'm going to try to show you what you would do in, you know, forward testing, right? Not investment advice, educational information. That's important. <laughs> okay. Trade your own book. A fourth part or piece of the cloud system, Chiku span, lagging span. I do not use it personally because my settings are slow enough that my signals to me are good enough that I don't need another part of the checklist, but it can be effective at times. If you want to play around with everything, I would encourage it. Encourage looking at, you know, singled settings, default settings with the lagging span, using that entire checklist in that case, if you're not using doubled settings because again doubled settings slow things down give you fewer entries fewer exits ideally making your trading a little bit smoother so cloud tk lines kumo twist lagging span which i shut off most of the time much like the kumo twist another type of cross is the tk cross and the tk cross along with the price position above or below the cloud is mainly how Longer short entries are triggered. And right here's your long entry checklist. The opposite is true for a short or bearish checklist. Once price is above the cloud, we are only looking for longs. The red button disappears, okay? We are not shorting anything once we are above the cloud. Our assumption is that there will be bullish continuation if you were to take any time point along this, this path in 2016 or 2017. Your entire assumption the whole time should always be Continuation, continuation, continuation. If I'm shorting, I'm swimming upstream. I'm going against the trend. I'm probably going to get run over. That's what the cloud is telling you. That doesn't mean any other indicator isn't going to tell you something else. The cloud is telling you long, 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 add to your longs, long your longs, add leverage to your longs the entire time. Okay. So your job when the price is above cloud, my job is to determine the best entries, the best stop losses, the best times to add or close those longs. It is never to decide, man, this looks like a great short. Okay, you're, the cloud is not going to help you with that most of the time. We'll get to how the, the TK lines help you, but the cloud's trying to tell you entry and exits, entry and exits. It does not tell you where price is potentially going. It doesn't give you a levels per se, okay? It just says we're probably going higher, probably going higher, probably going higher. 
ideal example, right? Anything trend following on back testing during this period is going to look great. But let's break it down with the checklist on this example. So we get our, our bullish Kumo breakout is what it's called. Price is above the cloud, you know, somewhere in here. Uh, price eventually holds above the cloud and we get a bullish Kumo twist. Okay, that's part of the checklist. Price above cloud, check. Bullish cloud, check. Also during this time, we had a bullish TK cross, check. So for me, those three scenarios are good enough for a long entry. Realistically, bullish Kumo breakout and a bullish TK cross is probably good enough. Uh, there, there are specific times when the entry without a bullish or congruent cloud in that specific case, you'll get run over. I'll go over that in a second. So throughout this entire period, we're long, we're massaging longs, we're getting in and out of longs. Uh, when you get a bearish TK cross, okay, with price above cloud, that tells you to get out of your long. So this entire time while you are long in this specific patch here, your stop loss is any entry inside of the cloud. The cloud is support when price is above cloud. Cloud is resistance when price is below cloud. So you're in here, you're holding, you're holding, you're holding, you're still holding, and bearish TK cross, you're out. Price never goes below the cloud. So you never stopped out. Uh, and then you get a TK recross as the yellow is highlighted there. It tells you to get back in. Okay. Then you have a mix of price in the cloud, bearish TK cross. Then we get a breakout. Then we get a bullish cross. Then we get an actual real deal move. And then eventually you get the bearish cross along with the move into the cloud. Okay. During this period, you're holding your long, you're getting a great trade, right? The cloud won't always give you the best exits. It won't always give you the best entries alone, right? If you add something onto this like chart patterns, you know, in this period, you'd say, well, there's some sort of triangle forming. There's some sort of potential head and shoulders here that I need to look out for. You know, these events, uh, this was China, I believe this was ETF denials, one of the early ones, maybe I'm flipping that. I don't know. But in those, in between those periods, cloud gives you entry and exit signals. You hold above the cloud the whole time, gives you an entry and exit signal. The trades aren't always great. Sometimes they're flat at best, right? But when you do get a real deal trade, the cloud wants to hold you in that long for 80% of the trade. The top 10%, the bottom 10%, the cloud could care less. It cares about the meat in the middle, that 80% when you actually get that move. So what you're always on the lookout for, where is price relative to cloud? Do we have a bullish or bearish TK cross? Is the cloud itself bullish or bearish? And then something else to add onto that, how far away is price from the cloud and from the Kijun. This is where using the TK lines in the cloud as an oscillator, there are specific indicators for this, but once you start looking at it and understanding, you'll realize, okay, price is pretty far away from the cloud here, or price is pretty far away from the Kijun here. The potential for, not the eventuality or necessity, the potential for a retracement back to that mean reversion line, the Kijun, grows as price moves farther away from that level, much like any moving average. So we can use that level to our advantage if we are in a bullish environment and we're looking to add to our longs or we're looking to place bids somewhere, right? Let's say you open a chart, you're in an active situation for a long, let's say you open Microsoft or Tesla or whatever it is on the stock world and things look parabolic and you're telling yourself, I really don't want to enter here. Where would be a good place? Well, one way to do that is look at the Kijun on the daily chart. When we tap the Kijun, known as the Kijun bounce, get, got that from Chaos Trader. He talks about that a lot. Again, your stop losses the whole time are the cloud. So if the Kijun gets close to the cloud or you get a Kijun bounce and you move into the cloud, right? Things get murky, things get messy, you can get stopped out. But typically when you get an opportunity for a Kijun bounce, that level using these settings, oddly enough, works out pretty well most of the time. Anecdotal, but for me, it's... uh effective. All right. So those are the basics. Now let's look at the settings. This is, this is default doubled. Effectively, if you're doubling a setting, you're doubling the time frame. So realistically, we're looking at the two day cloud. So if you are chronically on a low time frame and you're wondering, I've got all these amazing TA indicators and setups and none of them are working. I'm just getting stopped out or I'm losing money. Move to the daily. Okay. Live in the daily. Your home is now the daily. Double all your settings. See how you do. Paper trade it, trade it in real life. Stay away from this disease of going down on timeframes, okay? 
especially if you're new, people are prone to that. Uh, so this is doubled default on the daily. And if we think about, again, price position relative to cloud, is that clean on backtesting? For the most part, during this trend, yes. You know, we had a few potential bearish breakdowns here, uh, but I would argue the signals are cleaner on the doubled settings. You do get pretty clean Kumo breakouts. You get clean, you know, TK cross recrosses. This one's not that bad of an example to look at. You know, but the difference as the difference between the two settings, right? Tells you to get out up here, you know, re-entry, exit, re-entry, exit, re-entry, exit, re-entry, exit, entry. So depending on the market, depending on the speed of the market, slight variations on what I'm using, totally fine, right? No big deal. Uh, let's look at the default settings. Now I'm not using the lagging span, right? So for me, things get slightly noisier here on the default settings. What I could do is use the two day or use the weekly, right? I can move the time frames and still use these settings. It's just for me, I'd rather just bump up the settings, use the daily and be done with it. You know, the Kijun bounces aren't clean. What is this, right? We're in and out of the cloud a bunch. Um, it's just not as clean of a move relative to my settings for me, right? And let's look at current time frame. You know, it's July 25th. If you're watching this years from now. What happened in March? Well, we went below the cloud, you know, we went below again. It was a bearish cloud. Maybe this is a good short entry. Then you get stopped out. Uh, let's look at 2022. Oh, look, a bullish entry, you know, didn't really go anywhere. Short side of things worked out. Um, and then you get a bunch of garbly mess in here with signals. You get a garbly uh, Kuma breakout here without the lagging span that I would take a trade on. So again, for me, what I'm looking at, what I care about are crypto double settings, you know, effectively, or the crypto settings or Carpet Octum settings, however you want to think about that. 2061, 2030. To me, this just looks cleaner. I know the entire time my head is, I'm only looking for shorts. We are bearish. We are bearish. This is death and doom, devastation, radiation, decay, right? Now, in this territory, rainbows, butterflies, up only, bullish, bullish, bullish. Kind of similar to 2017, honestly, right? We get these Kumo retests over and over again. So visually for me, it's just cleaner, okay? That's why I use those settings. Let's go, over, let's go through another example. Let's look at 2020, 2021. Again, this is benefit of hindsight, but you gotta, if you want to do backtesting, you got to start somewhere. You got to look at something. And using the replay function on uh, TradingView, which I'll do in a second, you can hit this button, this replay button, and go to a specific time point and see what you would have done, right? There's even some like paper trading stuff down here. Um, but I, I took some screenshots, so we'll look at that, those type of examples. Okay, Rises of Cloud, it's 2020, you know. Let's say we don't even know about having, but we do know about having because we're aware. So we're already bullish. We're already looking for longs anyway in our head. We're here in crypto. We're bullish, right? We think it's going to go to infinity and beyond. The cloud is telling you post COVID, finally we're back above the cloud. You know, I sort of cut off the COVID candle, but back above the cloud, great. This is how it would work. If you're just trading the cloud alone on the daily using these settings, right? Open, close, open, close open, close. Okay. <laughs> so you're holding the entirety of the uptrend, right? Again, the cloud gets you in 80% of the way. It doesn't guarantee some mega move to a 10,000 X move. It just says, look, you should be long here. Look, you should probably be flat here. Look, you should definitely probably close here. <laughs> okay. Now, while this is happening, right, let's say you don't have the benefit of knowing when you're seeing this TK cross price above cloud and bullish Kumo. You're not following me on Twitter when I'm screaming about this in October 2020. And people are saying, ah, well, the Tenkin crossed over the Kijun, so it can't be bullish or some other nonsense, right? Wrong. Sorry. Every time you get a picture like this, bullish. Okay. <laughs> get long. Okay. We're below the cloud. Get out of your longs. Why are you still long? Why are you still long, right? Why are you still short when prices look like this uh, with the Doubled settings on the daily, right? There's just no reason. Now, let's say you're in the midst of looking at a price chart like this. And again, like, you know, we're maybe overbought. You think we're a little heated. Where would you put bids? This entire time, the cloud is telling you it wants bids here. Bids, 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 bids. So maybe, you know, it keeps you out the entirety of this move for several months. And you're pissed off. You're not getting an entry. When it hits, it hits. It looks great. When it hits and stops you out, as it did here. Not so fun, but this isn't an all or nothing system. So you can easily, you know, let's say you, you catch the chart here. You say, okay, I'm going long. We'll talk about fractals in a second. 
to get some more fine tuning on the re-entries and stop losses. But let's say you're long here and you're just holding, right? You're long here and you're holding. Maybe you're long up here, you're adding here, right? That's how you would trade this. And one other thing to notice is when we are above the Tenkin or below the Tenkin, in a bearish case, we're holding above those levels or below those levels. It's usually an extremely bearish, sorry, bullish sign in this case. Now, if we're sort of chopping around in between the Tenkin and between the Tenkin and the Kijun, certainly less momentum, right? Just as a mental gauge, you can use that also as part of your subjective entries, sizing, position, leverage. But that's why you want to follow this as it's happening to get entries to move your your uh, entry your, your bids asks around, right? Now, let's say that's just not good enough for you. Another chaos trader nugget using Williams fractals. So in trading, you just type in Williams fractals or fractals and you'll see these pop on your chart. When you get a low, high, low, you'll get what I call a bullish fractal. When you get a high, low, high, you'll get a bearish fractal. Okay. So this is that same chart. We'll trade it the same. Now let's add the layer of the fractals on top of that. So we get our long entry signals down here again, right? October, 2020. We've got bullish go breakout, bullish cloud, bullish TK cross. It's go time. Great. Using the fractals, the bearish fractal, the red fractal gives you a trailing stop loss. So the moment we close below that level, you're out of your, you're out of your long. The moment we make a new fractal, you move your stop loss up. So in this specific example, we're moving a stop loss up, we're moving it up. And eventually we get a candle close below the previous fractal and you're out of your trade. You're stopped out, right? Previous fact, fractal breached on candle close, stop loss hit. Let's say you pulled up this chart in November and you're looking for an entry. You've got bids on the key June. You're happy. Let's say you also want to add bids or you want to get in the market somewhere else, right? Now what you can do is use the bullish fractals anytime we exceed that level, it's telling you to add, 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 add. <laughs> okay. So just the opposite of a trailing stop loss. It's a trailing entry system, I guess you could say. So let's say you're long from October to December here. You're stopped out currently flat other than bids on the key June. So what would you do? You would wait for a fractal breach previously for an entry. And then you'd reapply apply the fractals as a stop loss, you know, and then, then things start to get kind of messy, depending on how active you want these trades in and out, right? The whole time we're above the Tenkin, but the fractals are kind of telling you get in and out. Do I get in based on the last fractal? I mean, it can get messy. So you have to have some experience with it, but as a trailing stop loss system, I think it is excellent along with the cloud. So again, let's say you, you open your long here. When the fractals move down, by the way, your, your entry should move down if you're trying to get long. So your fractals move down, then they get breached and you're long that whole time, stop loss, long this whole time, stop loss, stop loss, stop loss. You're out here and you had bids at the key gym, So you're back in, then you get a fractal again and so on and so on and so on until eventually you're not above the cloud anymore. You're in the cloud and you have a bearish TK cross. So at that point it's telling you, whoa, buddy, the bull trend is over. Fractal riding is over. We're in the cloud now. We've reset momentum. We've reset trend. Stop looking for longs. <laughs> Why are you still long, right? So fractals will help you massage those entries. You know, even if you don't use it the whole time and you just want some sort of stop loss, it will help. Let's look at a, the current year to date, January to present, right? I always like to look at, old, you know, back testing years ago and then back testing on right now. What does this look like? How would I, how would I trade this right now? So since 2023, we had a bullish Kuma breakout, right? Fractal, fractal, fractal. We're moving up our stop loss. Move it up again. We're out on this candle. Back in on this candle. We never get an entry this entire time. And then we get stopped out. And then we're back in the cloud. So we're really in trouble. The Kijun, as I say here, is next to the cloud. So this doesn't really qualify as a uh, Kijun bounce. This is the BTFP, SVB stuff, right? Then we get a bullish Kumo breakout, bullish Kumo twist and a fractal entry. Okay. So if you're not long at this point, there's really no reason not to be based on this system. So now you're long, you're holding stop loss, stop loss. Uh, the stop loss is on the wicks, by the way, not the bodies. So if we get a candle close below the wick of the fractal candle, right? That's where your stop loss would be. So it's telling you to add there, telling you to add there and, and so on and so on and so on. So up here, we never get a long entry, right? We never even get stopped out until we breach a fractal. 
So you're holding, you're holding, you're holding. And if you know chart patterns, you're like, well, I think this is potentially a head and shoulders up here, right? And you also know that if we start making higher highs after we form a right shoulder, then you're definitely not expecting a bearish reversal. You're, you're expecting bullish continuation, but that never happened, right? So you're out on the cloud entry, you're out on the TK cross definitely, and you never get a bullish TK cross again until end of June. And then that sort of puts us where we are now, where this entire time we're basically flat. You know, we're not really making a higher high on the fractals. You can move the fractals up and down all you want. You could say, well, maybe there's an entry here. That's fine. But realistically, again, if we're in a range, you kind of just box it off. And, you know, you know your stop losses are probably down here. Your entries are probably going to be up here. And you don't really need the fractals at that point. So at the current time, if you're using fractal, fractals, you're flat. You've got bids on the Kijun. You could use the fractals as an entry. So if we make a higher high above 30K. And as always, your, your stop loss is on the cloud. Okay. So I'm excited to see how this works out. Because maybe we do get a Kijun bounce. It doesn't look like it wants to bounce so far. Maybe we do get move through the cloud and a bounce again, or maybe we get a bearish Kumo breakout. But in any case, this system is telling you flat, you're out, right? There's no momentum here. There's no higher highs here. There's nothing to live for up here. Okay. You're just out of the market. Let's look at some more examples. Let's go to the weekly. In 2014 and 2015, what happened on the weekly cloud? Well, we were below the cloud the entire time. And the time frame should dictate the probability of trend. So higher time frames always take over lower time frames. You know, if you see a bullish Kumo breakout on the hourly chart and the weekly chart is telling you we're still below the cloud, the larger trend is bearish. Okay. So we had our bearish TK cross, Mt. Gox collapses, right? There's news. There's all sorts of stuff. People are losing money left and right. Can't get their money out of Mt. Gox, whatever else, whatever else doesn't matter. The chart doesn't care or know any of that's happening. So bearish TK cross first, bearish Kumo breakout, the cloud doesn't know it's going to $200, right? The cloud doesn't know this is an 80% drawdown from the top. The cloud doesn't care. The cloud is just telling you, hey, trader, things don't look so good for the bulls right now. You should probably not be long here. And it continues to tell you, hey, you should probably not be long here this entire time until you get a bullish TK across the price of a below cloud, sorry, and a price entry in the cloud. So, you know, if you're short this entire time, the cloud system here is telling you, okay, it's time to get out and... We're in the cloud now. It's definitely time to get out. Time to get out of the pool. You're getting pruny. Mr. Short. Momentum is shifting. Trend is shifting. The first signs of life after an extended trend. Price closing in the cloud. TK cross. Now we know what happens after this. I'll get to that. But if you see a chart like this and you're still short, the cloud is telling you you shouldn't be. The cloud is telling you time to short was months ago. Okay. Momentum has shifted. Now let's look at the bullish side. I'm going to skip the edge to edge. I'll get that in a sec. In a second, I'll get to that in a second. But let's look at this entry specifically because this is a great example, right? We're on the weekly. We're using these settings. We think we're best things since sliced bread. We're checking things off the boxes. We got a bullish TK cross. We got a bullish Kumo breakout. We got lagging span with cloud above, uh, above cloud and above price. It's go time. We're long at 767, and we're ready for all time highs. And what do you know, the very next week, price closes back in the cloud and effectively would stop you out. And many weeks later, right? Now this may happen this go around. This may happen in 2024 and 2025, whatever it is. You may see this exact type of thing where the first move outside of the cloud, even though it checks all the boxes, it won't quite get us there. So many weeks later, we try again. We bullish go rig out again, bullish cloud that whole time, bullish DK cross that whole time and the rest is history. Now, did the cloud know that there was having coming up that Bitfinex was gonna get hacked and we had a key June bounce here? No, when we're in the cloud, it's saying price is neutral, price is turbulent, things could get real nasty, and it's trendless, it could do anything, okay? That's why trading while you're in the cloud can be a dangerous, dangerous game. Let's look at another example. When price is flopping around like a fish in and out of the cloud, above and below the cloud, does that, sound like a clean trend to you? The answer is no. Uh, in this specific case, pre-2021, the entire time, COVID posts 2019, you know, bullish move. We never had a bullish cloud on the weekly, that entire time. We finally get a bullish Kumo twist in 2021 with 
a bullish Kumo breakout, and the rest is history. And then in 2022, we finally closed below the cloud for the first time in uh, over a year, right? Let's say 18 months. The cloud is asking you, why are you still long? <laughs> why are you still long? Maybe you trade this key June bounce on the weekly. The problem with that here in this specific example, if your stop loss is in the cloud, you got to be super careful because your stop loss is, you know, liquidation effectively. So here's where I'd start to use some horizontal level or fractals. And then up here, you get another key June bounce. And then two weeks later, we get closed into the cloud. So right here, you're out of your trade. Cloud is telling you it's over. Sorry. You know, if you missed all 2021, too bad. We're neutral. Things are going to get ugly, trendless. We're not sure here, right? And then you get a bearish TK cross. Sure, you had a bullish combo breakout, but you never had a bullish TK cross. So you're not doing anything here. You're waiting for the bullish TK cross. I guess it would be recross because technically this probably was crossed bullish at that time. But again, if you long this, you stopped out. Long this, stopped out. And then we're back in the cloud. So once we're below the cloud, why are you still long? That's what the cloud wants to know in this specific example. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the short side. Let's look at 2018. Okay. Bearish Kumo breakout after the market goes haywire. It's $20,000 on Coinbase, Euphoria, Mania. Once you get a Kumo breakout, your stop loss is usually, initially anyway, the Kijun, right? This is effectively a trailing stop loss as well. We're also using the Kijun for ads to a short, or let's say we, we pull up a chart in February, middle of February, instead of beginning of January, right? Whatever. Those are the levels where we want to get short because at that point your stop loss is the cloud, right? And I know this is kind of marked up and messy, but when price is below the cloud, we're only looking for shorts. A bullish TK cross, when price is below the cloud, we'd be closing our shorts. Bearish TK cross, open your shorts. At no point in time are you opening longs here if you're only trading the cloud, right? And hey, what do you know? It worked out. Eventually we get your 80% drawdown from the top and yeah, it's messy in between, but it tries to keep getting you back into the short trade over and over and over. We never get a bullish Kumo breakout this entire time. It's telling you, sorry, trader, doesn't look so good. We're going lower. Okay, that, that's with 2061, 2030. Now, if we look at 1852, 104, 26, which is default doubled effectively, we get even more entries, even more closes. We get a bullish TK cross. You know, we're not using the lagging span. We get some sort of murky mess here right before the drop. So again, to me, I'd rather have less entries than more entries. Bump up the time frames. Daily doubled is more than enough to get great trades. Okay, let's look at 2022. What are we looking for for bullish? We're looking for price above the cloud. We're looking for a bullish ticket cross. Bullish cloud, lagging span above price. Okay, beginning of the year, we had none of those things. We had barely a bullish ticket cross. Okay, price started to get into the cloud. Okay, but we've been hurt before, right? We've had two other entries a few months ago that started like this and ended up going lower. Maybe you know a little bit about chart patterns and you're like, well, maybe this is a Adam and Eve. Maybe it's a double bottom. Maybe it's an ascending triangle. Maybe this is the one. Uh, this had an inverted head and shoulders. This whole thing was looking to be an Adam and Eve. Didn't quite pan out that way. Now, mind you, this is at 18K, right? Um, then at 20K, we get go time, baby. For the first time in over a year, prices above the cloud, bullish TK cross, bullish cloud, lagging span above cloud and above price as sort of the slam dunk. You know, let's say you're not sure and you're trying, you're making all these trades this entire time in 2022 and you tell yourself, okay, finally, let's look at something with, with a checklist. Wouldn't you know it? Cloud tells you, yeah, let's go long. And hey, that's, that's a pretty good trade, right? The cloud doesn't know anything about the rest of the year. It doesn't care. It just says, this is a good point in time relative to the past 120 periods to go long, to start buying again to start looking for higher highs instead of lower lows. That's what it's telling you. All right, let's get back to this edge to edge idea. So again, normally, normally the textbooks will tell you when price is in the cloud, we're neutral, we're non-trending, expect turbulence. Maybe we'll get a trend reversal, but it's not guaranteed. Okay, maybe. This is the weekly. There's like four examples in 10 years that you've gotten of legitimate cloud turbulence. Sometimes it looks like 2019 and 2020. Sometimes it looks like 2016. Sometimes it's a mix of both really in 2022. So is there an effective way to trade this or do we just set out the entire time? Because we're coming up on a potential edge to, or I shouldn't, 
lead the witness here. We're coming up on a potential move through the cloud. Okay, so yes, there is a way to do this. It's called an edge to edge trade. Why is this important? Well, it gives you an opportunity and a trend reversal before it's confirmed. So you got to keep that in mind. Historically for Bitcoin, these have an extremely high hit rate, especially prior to 2022, they had an extremely high hit rate. Now there were three failed edge to edge trades on the daily in 2022 for Bitcoin, but I'm really looking at this weekly edge to edge setup here and it's looking like a snack, but what do we need? Let's look at what we need historically. Here are all the examples, uh, 2020 on the daily, 2022. I kind of missed one here. That is also an edge to edge trade. Um, you're looking for a thick cloud and a congruent TK cross. A thick cloud gives you, you know, a target for your trade that's beyond $2 above or below price. You know, you're looking for a decent setup based on risk reward. Like I said, you need a congruent TK cross and these don't happen usually more than once a quarter on the daily chart using these settings. So, you know, if you're on some altcoin and you're seeing edged edge trade entries over and over and over again, probably not uh, profitable. So here's 2022 where we had a thick cloud, eventually get your bullish TK cross and we don't quite reach the other edge, right? And again, 2022, thick cloud, bullish TK cross, no chance, right? And then FTX explodes. Didn't have a thick cloud, didn't have a bullish TK cross. I'll forgive this one, but these two, not that all trades are going to be profitable, uh, didn't quite reach the exact target. Now, while you are in your active edge to edge trade, you can use the fractals, you can use some other stop loss system, right? To help determine when to get out of that trade if it doesn't reach the other edge. But things like 2021 on the daily slice through like butter again in July 2021, right through that cloud. And then in 2021 at the very end, right through that cloud. This early one in 2020, also not a great setup overall. The cloud wasn't really that thick and didn't have a bearish TK cross preceding the move. So this is kind of a picture perfect textbook example. If you're expecting a bearish edge to edge move, you want a bearish TK cross and then you want a thick cloud, right? That's a perfect setup, ideal. So let's fast forward to 2023. We've had two cloud entries on the daily. One of them has resulted in an edge to edge move. And really the first one did too, which just happened in like the span of 12 hours. So coming up here, there is potential for a move from 28 to 25, depending on size, leverage, whether or not you want to take that trade. That's a setup. It's, is it thick? Yes, ish. You know, it's probably good enough for a trade. Does it have a bearish TK cross yet? Uh, I say yes, but it actually doesn't. That's incorrect. So what you'd be looking for is a bearish TK cross. That's why I was so bearish here. Not only do we have that head and shoulders, but we had a bearish TK cross. We had price in the cloud. It was just very likely that we went lower there. So as bearish as we might be in the near term, currently the cloud's telling you not yet. Don't be so bearish just yet because this could survive on the key June and then keep going. So this I kind of went over. Uh, what about now? Prices above the cloud, bullish Kumo, bullish TK cross. Things are generally bullish, right? They're not bearish in any regard here. Do we have a potential for key June bounce? We do. Bids at 28K. Stop loss would be the cloud. So you'd have a super tight stop loss there because if we start to close into, into the cloud, that could trigger a full-blown edge to edge, right, to 25. So the cloud is trying to save you from lower lows and wants to get you out effectively right below your entry on that key June bounce. So definitely a great example currently of both Kijun Dodge potential and edge to edge potential. One other example of an edge to edge, this was 2019, infamous one. Everyone's super bearish down here. Everyone's saying we're going back to a thousand, right? It's over. We're never going to go above 3K again. Retail's not coming back, right? This is pre GME, by the way. <laughs> pre Stimmies. Crypto's dead, kind of like now. And uh, what do you know? We eventually reach the other edge of this cloud. So, not only did this have a very early entry and take an extremely long time through the cloud, it was active, you know, the active edge to edge move. It had a flat Kumo on the other side of it, which typically acts as a magnet. So this is an extremely rare setup. But when you see it, I said at that time, it's a slam dunk. Not only did we have an edge to edge move, we had uh, an ascending triangle. And what do you know, we eventually did go to 4,800 or wherever that target was. And your stop loss this entire time is the bottom of the cloud if you're long back here. Once you get some breathing room above the cloud, above the Kijun, you know, then you can start using the Kijun as a trailing stop loss. 
So these edge to edge moves on the weekly, when they happen, like they did in 2016, look like this, right? Like we kind of do now where there's a potential for a move to 42K. And here's that cloud again. Now, if we get into the cloud, your stop loss is all the way down here at the key June and the risk reward isn't very good, right? Your reward would be 42, your risk down here. I don't know what that is, one and a half X or something. The better entry would be the key June comes up to 25K, price goes down to 25K, and that's where it enters the cloud. Something weird you will see from time to time is this exact example where we sort of curl down for whatever reason and legitimately use the cloud as resistance, right? Now, the cloud is projected, in this case, 30 periods forward. That's the fourth setting, and it tries to give you an idea in the future of what resistance will be. That's why I think this is so effective. So it's saying once we break the resistance, it's go time, right? But not until then. <laughs> and that's important. So as far as the checklist goes for me, cloud all the way, the cloud checklist specifically, Kumo breakout, TK cross, Kumo twist, lagging span position, some other strategies you can use, key June bounce, like I talked about, flat Kumo goes magnet, edge to edge, the TKC clamp stuff, Again, another uh, Chaos Trader special. Once the TK lines start to flatten out, that effectively is telling you you've lost momentum. Now, realistically, you already know that because price is sort of retracing a little bit. But as the TK lines get extremely wide, the likelihood of continuation decreases. Much like a blown out RSI here. This is saying we're extremely far from the mean being the Kijun on the weekly and that we get less and less likely to see continuation unless we slow down a little bit, let the key June catch up. You'll see an example of this on the daily. Let me find a daily chart. Here's the daily in 2021. In early January, right, we just explode. We're way above the 10 can, way above the key June, then price goes flat. So usually when I see this, I'm screaming, okay, we've got a TKC clamp, right? Much like we are now on the daily, I get worried. When I see this, this TKC clamp, TK disequilibrium over and over and over again, that just says what well, you, you know, already know you lose momentum completely because you're going flat. You're less likely to see continuation when momentum just goes to zero, right? And you're already effectively overbought in these cases. So currently it's already too late to like call a, you know, a TKC clamp. Uh, but the early warning signs for the end of a trend would be to see something like this. You know, we we just happen to have three examples of it on the daily. So we can also use other stuff. I use other stuff, right? Pitchforks, chart patterns, fractals, volume. Uh, I don't really use OVB anymore. Indicators for exits, divergences, fractals. The pivots are great with the cloud as well because they give you a target on the upside or the downside, whereas the cloud is just telling you what to do during the trend. It's not telling you we're going to go to 250K. It's telling you, okay, trader, stay long or stay short or do nothing. All right, let's take, let's look at some examples, right? AT&T, random example, daily, sorry, this is weekly, weekly AT&T. Default doubled settings, not above the cloud since 2020. You're only looking for shorts. This thing looks absolutely tragic. You know, maybe there's other chart patterns here. We don't care. The cloud's just telling you, get out January 2020 and stay out. It's never really telling you to get back in. Not even a decent edge to edge setup here. You're only looking for shorts. You're still looking for shorts, right? We're pretty far away from the TK lines. So I wouldn't expect continuation down here. But once it gets back up near the key June, right? This is where the key June bounce stuff comes into play. This chart's telling you to get short again. It's telling you to keep shorting this until it's zero. Okay. Until we're back above the cloud. Um, on the daily, realistically, AT&T chart doesn't really help you. The clown doesn't help you, right? You're better off just drawing some lines, drawing a pitchfork, whatever this is, and calling it a day. It's not going to help you in times of extreme chop, okay? That's not what the cloud is for. There are other indicators for that, like drawing a horizontal line. Here's Tesla on the daily using crypto settings, right? Just as an example. doesn't matter. Told you to be bearish in 2022. Told you we were super far away from the key June in 2023 when things starting to flatten out. Then you get your mean reversion you get kind of honestly not a great edge to edge trade because by the time the entry was there, the exit was, you know, right on top of it. And we don't actually get bullish until we get bullish Kumo twist, bullish TK cross, right? People started to get bullish, I'm sure, in here. But the cloud is telling you not yet. 
It's also telling you not yet up here because we never had bullish cloud, right? So once you start to see these over and over and over and over again, you're like, oh, okay, I get it, right? Tesla on the weekly looks bullish. Don't have the bullish to get across yet. Where was this the most bullish in 2020? After all the chop was over, after I had a bullish TK cross or bullish Kumo twist, and that's it, right? So that's certainly something to watch for on Tesla. Uh, Costco daily, mega chop, ultra chop, chop suey, right? In 2022 and 2023. Now, 2021, great trend. Look at this trend, right? Up only, Kijun bounce, more up only, a TKC clamp, bearish TK cross, price through the cloud, some more chop, way down, right? Now, you don't know it's going to be choppy in April 2022, but after the third or fourth entry on this thing, maybe it's a good idea to start just drawing some lines. So now that we've ended that period, we've resumed the bullish continuation, right? So yes, I have the benefit of hindsight. I get that. That's why it's important to look at these now and to see, okay, let's just look at every chart. Let's look at all alts, everything to see what we would do. Um, this is Costco on the weekly, right? You know, if you're getting mega chopped on the daily, just move up a time frame. What is the weekly telling you? Bullish cloud, bullish TK cross, price above cloud. Looks great. Expect bullish continuation. Expect all-time highs uh, until this thing shows you some sort of divergence, reaches some sort of yearly pivot, whatever it is. But the cloud is telling you expect continuation. S&P, default doubled settings, gave you a sniper precision entry on the weekly here. Gave you the bullish Kumo breakout. You don't yet have bullish Kumo twist, but you're probably going to get it. And look how far away the price is from the TK lines here. It's certainly telling me be careful. You know, it would have told you be careful in uh, 2021 as well. But it definitely gets you in at the right point. It don't, doesn't always get you out at the best point. But it does try to keep you in for 80% of the trend. And when we're talking about time frames again, if we're getting chopped up on the daily, go to the two-day. How does that look? Looks okay. Looks decent. What does the three-day or what does the weekly or three-day or some higher time frame look like, right? Link. Oh, wow. We almost have a bearish or a bullish TK cross. Would you look at that? There's a massive edge to edge move potentially. You know, you'll see this on a lot of alts because they've retraced a ton historically. Some of these work out. Most of them never do. So sure, you have a you have a ceiling here if this starts to get into the cloud. But I wouldn't just expect that we're headed to 30. We hit eight by 2024. That isn't to say it can't happen, but I wouldn't open along and just walk away. You know, you do have to watch trailing stop losses in that case. Uh, ETH daily, pretty choppy, honestly, this year. Not terrible, but not great either. What about the two day cleaner? Get you in pretty low, kind of gets you in and out a little bit here. Kind of tells you now's an okay time for an entry, actually, so long as we don't dip into the cloud. What about the three day? Oh, wow, look at that. We're almost out of the three day cloud. So if I'm, if I'm looking at some oddball time frame, you know, this is probably why I'm waiting for some sort of checkbox on the cloud. There's also you know, a chart pattern here, right? If this fails, it's going to have to go below the key June and back into the cloud. Otherwise, the cloud's telling you, yeah, it's probably going up. And on the weekly, it already has a bullish TK cross, has that flat Kumo magnet syndrome at 2900. So there is a chance for a decent trade here on ETH to 2900. Now, the problem is people look at this and they say, okay. I'm long, 2900 is my target before it even gets into the cloud, right? So you gotta have some patience. This could take a long time. You know, we could snake up here, we could tease it a little bit there, a nice little wiki wick, and then eventually get our entry in like March 2024 and move to 29, right? So you gotta be patient with these on the weekly. Let's say you pull up a chart like this. This is Pepe or whatever, and the cloud isn't even there, right? This just means there isn't enough trading history. So you have to go down time frames. Things already are dangerous because you're not going on uh, daily charts or four hour charts. You're looking at the 15 minute chart. Okay. Even still, the cloud is telling you already on the 12 hour, hey, we're below the cloud. This was a head and shoulders, by the way. Things ain't looking so hot for Senior Pepe here. Uh, four hour, same thing. Long, get out of your long. Go long again, get out of your long. Maybe go long again somewhere in here, but definitely be out here, right? Why are you still long? That's what it's telling you here. So in this entire time on launch, it's telling you, what are you doing, trader? Look at this. We're below the cloud the whole time. <laughs> so use the cloud. It is extremely helpful. I promise you. I can't tell you the number of people who have come back to me years after learning cloud saying, wow, that really helps me. Or I'm using it and I'm finally profitable. Or 
I can finally understand what to do in markets. That's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Happy trading.